Hey friends, so today's topic is on sound design with feedback loops, or in other words, things that make you go, whoa. Here's a sneak peek of what's coming up in this video. Awesome. Well, if Ableton's your thing, it's my thing too, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. Also, if you want to support the channel, my music links are down in the description. Let's get it. Okay, so if you've ever made a feedback loop in Ableton before, likely it was on accident and it destroyed your brain forever. <laughs> it's a horrible sound, and it's usually the result of an input being fed back into an output being fed back into an input, and eventually it becomes just a horrible line and it makes you want to jump off a cliff. Well, in this case, this is not that situation. This is controlled feedback, okay? And so the idea here is it's very simple. We're sending audio to a return track. That return track is sending audio back to another track, and that track is sending audio back to the return track. Or in other words, <laughs> I know this looks like a sports book play, but essentially check it out. We're sending a sound to a return track. The return track is coming back to this audio track. This audio track is sending audio back to the return track via this send. And so you get this infinity situation, right? Now, why is it controlled? Well, it's controlled because we have a limiter with a low ceiling. Okay, you can see this low ceiling setting in the audio track. Let's go ahead and take a listen to this example. I'm calling this example Reverb Ghosts. But essentially, this is the sound that I'm sending, okay? With every controlled feedback loop, there has to be some sort of control element that you have, okay? Just letting it go off by itself, that's not fun. In this case, I'm using the auto filter, okay, as my control. Since I'm using this bandpass filter type right here, I can make peaks in the signal that will eventually cause a feedback loop to occur, but if I pull it back down, it goes away. Check it out. And if I want to, I can turn up the LFO of the auto filter a little bit and get a little bit of modulation here, making it a little bit even more scary. It's almost singing. Cool, so let's build this from scratch. I'm gonna delete this audio track, but essentially you start with just a sound, okay? In this case, I'm just using one of the clacks from my forest collection, and it's just going to the master. Now, I'm gonna also send this to a send. Now, normally your send has a reverb in it. Just delete whatever's in it, okay? So you have just a raw return, all right? Next thing you do is you make an audio track, okay? And please, the very first thing you should do with this every single time is to grab yourself a limiter, okay? The next thing on the limiter is to turn the ceiling down considerably. Uh, let's start with negative 10, okay? So the ceiling is essentially the loudest the limiter could ever get, okay? So the ceiling at this point is negative 10. All right, so the next step is just to simply take the return, and you can do this one of two ways. You can either choose audio from the return, right? See, now the audio from this return is coming back to this track, or you can simply send audio to to audio, right? So this, this is our, you know, I'm gonna rename this, I'll call it the feedback track or whatever, right? Okay, and once you got all that set up, the final thing to do is to hit the monitor in. Now we're hearing two of this sound. We're hearing this clack, and then it's going to the return, and then it's coming back to the feedback, and there's a slight delay on it, so it sounds a little different, right? Right? And that's because of the slight delay that occurs in that situation, just the smallest little bit of delay. Uh, you could also consider it comb filtering. All right, so then in order to get some feedback going, you have to turn up this send. Now this is where you gotta be careful because, yep, it's gonna take off. But thankfully, because we have this limiter, we're all gravy, baby. Now you might be wondering, oh, what's the difference between this and just using a really short time delay? Well, there isn't a difference until you start adding effects into the feedback loop. So all effects that you want to add would be pre-limiter, okay? So we're going to put a reverb here. So we'll turn the send back down, make sure this send is down. I'm going to start turning up some things. So the diffusion network, I'll turn it up. Maybe I'll put this on high mode. I'll turn up the sends. We can start to hear a little feedback in there here, just a little bit, right? Maybe the next thing I'll do is I'll turn the gain up into the limiter. Oh, there we go. 
feedback is so cool. There's like a synergy, right? There's there's a point upon which the signal will continue to get amplified, right? See how it's kind of taken off right now? It's just trying to. Just a little bit of gain on that limiter. Oh, yeah. Super scary sounds, right? Okay, so we need a control element, right? And so that control element this time is going to be an auto filter. Switch to bandpass mode. Okay, so now that I've got this bandpass filter, I can turn this gain up. And because the bandpass filter is pulled down, we're not going to get any feedback. But as I start to point it up... Ooh, there we go. I'm turning the gain down to the limiter a little bit because it's kind of overacting. <laughs> but now we're on to something, right? Now, if you turn the pre-delay up, you can get a little bit more of a cascading sound. Here, it kind of has a different note to it. Let's turn the pre-delay pre up pretty high. <laughs> awesome. So what's cool about this method is that you can kind of tune this to your song if you want to because you can point the frequency in specific places, right? Awesome. Let's move on to the next example. Cool. So in this example, we are actually playing the feedback. So I'm taking my same clack sound, right? And I'm running it through a delay. I'm just using delay right here, right? I've got the feedback of the delay turned up pretty high and I've got it on jump mode. Okay. I'll explain this in a moment. But essentially, this is the, the process of what's called car plus strong synthesis. And what's happening is that I'm playing very, very short delay times, but I'm changing the filtration of the feedback, right? So you understand, delay itself is a feedback loop, right? But the only effects that you've got in the way are essentially a filter, right? So if I turn this off, that's the whole signal. If I turn the filter on, now, you can get these really awesome material style sounds in the similar way that Corpus sounds in Ableton, right? Or Collision. But what's fun about this is that you can have a feedback loop continue to open up the feedback and continue to make it louder and louder and louder. So in this case, if I turn up the send, <laughs> because I'm turning the send up, I'm creating more feedback than the delay unit itself can, right? Now, before I was telling you about the re-pitch mode, well, essentially, I'm modulating the time a little bit. So if I turn this on re-pitch mode, the time that it takes to get to the next delay setting, if I start to modulate, the delay will take a little bit more time. So check this out. Whereas jump mode is just jumps directly to my next setting. So if I put it on re-pitch and I turn up this send, we can get some fun things going on. <laughs> right? So it's critically important to have a limiter, right? The limiter is the thing that allows this thing not to rip your head off, right? Okay. And as you can see, I've got the ceiling pretty low on here. Awesome. So running with this idea, let's move on to the next example. Okay. So in this example, this is something I've never heard before ever. This is taking a feedback loop and running a beat through it. Okay. So just listen to what happens here. Is that not rad or what? Okay, so essentially what's happening here is I decided, okay, I like the effect of leaving the delay on re-pitch mode, okay, and then stepping through different delay times. I like that effect, but I want to sync it to a clock, okay? So what I did is I busted out an LFO. So I know that this is a little bit more complex, so we're just going to build this from scratch. All right, so I'm going to delete this track. So we have our beat, and our beat is running into this return, okay? Now, we need to make an audio track. In this audio track, I'm going to grab limiter, slap it on there, gonna turn it down considerably. And the next thing we're gonna do is route the return track into this track. So now we've got our feedback loop set up if I turn the input to in. Okay, now check it out. Here's what it sounds like without this track. Here's, here's with it. We can hear that comb filtering instantly. We're just doubling the signal that's slightly delayed, right? Okay, so. Let's grab ourselves a delay. Now that this delay is in here, I'm gonna turn the feedback up and the dry wet up. 
right? And that's just gonna take off if I turn this up. Oh, I gotta switch this over to master. Okay, so now that this is all set up, I can I can make this thing take off if I want to. Right, but that's not really what we're trying to do. I'm gonna unsync the delay and kind of turn this down a little bit. I'm gonna turn the feedback up and now we get But that's not anything new. We haven't, you've already heard stuff like this. But what's really cool is if you reach for the modulators and you get yourself an LFO out and you switch this LFO over to random mode. Okay, so this is just a stepped random, right? And now we're gonna lock that to the clock. I'm gonna set it to a quarter note division. Okay, and then we're gonna map that to the time. And I don't want to go all the way up. Maybe I'll go up to like 50% or something. And I don't want to go all the way down. Maybe I'll go to like 10 or something like that. So now, when the, when the beat plays, take a listen. Turn the ceiling down a little bit because we're clipping. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. But the next thing that I want to do is I want to create this into a feedback loop because right now we're only using the delay's internal feedback loop. Let's start to turn up the actual track send. Tight. <laughs> oh man, that is so fun. Now, something else I want to say is that you can also make stereo feedback loops by turning on the ping pong mode because essentially what this will do is it will start to send the delay to the left and the right speaker at opposite times. So let me turn this on, check it out. <laughs> That's so cool. Now the other thing to know is that you can constantly add things to the feedback loop. So for example, I could reach for, let's see what happens when we add an amp to this. <laughs> this is gonna be ridiculous. So yeah, as you can see, feedback is an exciting new frontier of sound design. And I figured a lot of folks would wanna tinker around with what I've already done here. So I've decided to let you have these sets in my Gumroad, the link is available up here. Anyway, let's get back to it. Now, you're probably wondering at this point, okay, I've made something crazy, how do I capture this? Well, it's really simple. Right click, make an audio track, and choose resampling. So what does resampling do? Essentially resampling is recording anything that Ableton is making out of the master track and routing it to this track, right? So you can capture all of the stuff. Right, so I could just turn this on. Right, now if I mute these tracks and just listen to this track, I've captured. Now, let's say you want just the really weird delay stuff and not the beat. Okay, well, how would you do that? Well, you essentially say, all right, this track is only gonna be sends only, right? And so what that means is that the master is never gonna hear the drum track. And then the last thing to do is to go over to the return and say, okay, return, don't send the master either, just send to that second track right there. And that way we've totally cut off any of the direct signal from the drums. Now listen. <laughs> it's such a great way to make effects, right? Okay, cool. So let's move on to the next example. Okay, so this is, the thus far, this is the fav my favorite thing I've come up with yet with this. <laughs> That's so cool. So essentially the idea here is that I'm using a wavetable and I'm running it into this feedback loop that's got a vocoder at the front end, okay? I'm also using an OTT. I don't know why I have that on the wrong side. Come on. Super cool sound, kind of making like a, like a spectral chord stab kind of sound. Okay, so let's go ahead and build this up from scratch. I'm gonna just, instead of rebuilding this, I'm gonna save your time by deleting all this stuff and we're just gonna leave the limiter in there. And so we've got our feedback loop set up, right? And so this is the sound we have coming in. So that's the sound of the wavetable that's heavily limited, right? So that's just that sound, right? That's all. 
It's just a saw waveform. Okay, and so then the next idea is that we're gonna make feedback with, let's go ahead and use an echo instead of a delay. Same thing, doesn't matter. Maybe what we'll do is we'll turn the time way down. Add a little reverb to it. Maybe make it ping pong. Now, if we want this to take off, of course, we turn up the synth. Right? Easy stuff. So we're going to open the filter up a little bit, this low pass filter. I want some more, some more of that top end. Cool. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab vocoder. And vocoder is really interesting. If you switch it over to modulator mode, essentially it can modulate itself. So the modulator is the carrier in this situation. So essentially all that we've set up are just a series of really, really narrow bandpass bands. That's what this is, okay? So if we put this on a high band amount, turn on the enhance, get an interesting sound and we can kind of carve it out. And as we start to turn up the feedback, we can hear those interesting feedback sounds starting to come in. You gotta be careful again. Now, if we take the formant of this and make it go up an entire octave, notice how with the vocoder off, that's the kind of sound we get with the vocoder on, we get that kind of sound. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, we can take each one of these bands and start to reduce the amount of frequencies each one of them has, so narrow them, essentially. We can open the delay up a little bit. Right? Now we're getting a really interesting sound, and so we can start to open the feedback up of the echo itself. And now we're going to control all of this, okay, yet again with a multiband dynamics. And maybe this time, instead of using OTT, I'll just dial in a quick mid-band control, because that's what sounds like is really taking off. You can see that right there. So I'll switch it over to the above mode. There we go. Now we got a tinsely kind of... And feedback, yet again, remember, feedback is controlled in multiple places. Essentially the ascend or the feedback amount here, these are all different feedback controls, okay? Let's open this back up a little bit. Now you can kind of round this off a little bit on the top. Oh, that's just awesome. Now, we can also send the original to the master and use this as like a kind of weird pseudo reverb. So now we get. Go ahead and make this pre fader so I can. Yeah, now I can blend them. <laughs> oh, it's just so cool. All right, and then finally, I wanted to show you this example because I've done everything in session view, but you can get a lot of control in arrangement view if you're trying to do some sound design here. You can hear that <laughs> feedback loop is already trying to take off. But essentially, this is the sound. So we're using feedback to make a really interesting riser sound. So I've already made a riser and operator and it sounds like this. Right, classic. And what I've done is I've automated the track volume to go down. So I'm feeding the feedback loop with the operator. And as the feedback takes off, the operator just turns itself down. So essentially, this is what we get.
<laughs> Super fun. Anyway, if you look at what's happening here, all that this is is I'm automating the delay time of the delay to go down over time, as you can see with this guy. And as I do that, the feedback is starting to take off because of the feedback loop. And so you get this kind of cascading thing where you get the op the the operator is going up in pitch, but the delay is going down, and you get this kind of cool sound. Now we can remove the operator from the master just by going to sends only, and we get this sound. <laughs> okay, now in this example, again, the, the design around a feedback situation is that you have to control the feedback. And what I've done here is I've used envelope follower to listen to this wavetable sound. And this, this yields this really interesting situation where I've got this melodic instrument that's making these feedback loops and all these interesting harmonics. So check it out. Without this envelope follower here, we'd get... Now, as you can see, this envelope follower is taking care of this frequency of the delays filter as well as the send amount, okay? It's very volatile. If I turn this, if I deleted this situation and I turn this up, woo, we'd get some serious takeoff on that feedback. So let me show you how I did this. So essentially you've seen all this before, right? You've seen the delay and then the limiter with the low ceiling. This time I'm gonna reach for the modulators and I'm just gonna get out an envelope follower. Now what envelope follower does is it creates MIDI control based on the incoming signal. So in this case, it's listening to that wavetable. So I can map this to the send amount. Now what'll happen is it'll turn up the send and it'll increase our potential for the feedback loop to take off, but then it's gonna clamp down on the signal. Now, in order for this to work, I need to turn the fall time down a little bit so that it stays open longer. Now, the filter is very, the filter on this delay is very low. So I need also to open the filter up so I can get the, kind of sound happening, right? So I'm gonna go into here, map this to the frequency. Now I need to dial this in a little bit. I'm gonna make it hang out around here, around the fundamental frequency of the notes, but I'm gonna make it go all the way up to the top. So now we can hear that we're starting to get a little bit of that feedback taking off. Opening up some of those harmonics, right? Now another thing we can do is we can increase the gain of this return. And so as I increase the gain, I'm gonna be basically increasing the effect over the filter frequency as well as the amount of feedback we get, so. Now let's say we want more uh, feedback. We could just go in here and dial back the filter frequency amount. And now I can turn the gain up a little bit more. Yeah, hear that? And that might be a little bit over the top, but it sounds awesome. And of course, whatever you feed into a feedback loop is gonna dramatically change the situation. So if I played a different waveform, for example, versus, listen to the harmonic difference here, right? I could choose just a different random. And remember, you can always go to sends only, Right? Awesome. So yeah, I really feel like feedback loops are another new frontier of sound design. And if you're interested in sound design, I actually have a course dedicated to sound design with Ableton Live. So if you resonated at all with my teaching style, I encourage you to check out this little webinar that I put together where I kind of throw a bunch of Ableton concepts at you really fast. So if you want to check that out, it's in the link up here. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.